book of Acts chapter number 27. I'm going to finish up what I started last week. The Lord helping us this morning and we ask for your prayers that God would help us and give us direction today. We appreciate all the goodness of God. This is a life of storms I've, I've determined over the last year. Uh, in my life, this has been a life of storms, but God safely saw us through them and He's been with us the whole step of the way. Many of y'all have faced a lot of storms in your life this year. But God saw you through, and He's kept you safe, and He'll continue to do that until the day He comes back. And Paul faced storms. In this chapter that we read to you last Sunday, I'm going to pick up down here with uh, verse, number, uh, verse number 37. We'll pick up with that verse this morning. And I want to give you this morning uh, four strong anchors in our storms. Four strong anchors in our storms. As we know this story, we know that Paul was had was put on a ship and, and uh, was being sailed away to see Caesar. As the Lord said he must go before Caesar. And as he, as he left, he, he told him, he said, we shouldn't do this. This is, not, uh, this is going to be bad if we take this journey. But they did not listen to him, so they wound up in a, uh, a, a hurricane, a typhoon, uh, a storm of, of mass you know, proportion upon, upon the sea. And as they were in that storm, uh, there was no hope for them. There, it seemed like the storm was going to overwhelm them and they were all going to be lost. But Paul had the promise of God saying that they were all going to be uh, land safely. And uh, we'll begin to read here in just a moment, but first let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in thy house and God for the opportunity to come, Lord, before the throne of God and ask for your help. We do that today. God, we realize you're God, and beside thee there is none other. And I thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, for salvation. We thank you, Lord, for all your goodness to us. Lord, I pray right now for forgiveness of sin. I pray for cleansing. I pray that the Spirit of God, Lord, would speak through us the words today that would feed somebody, God, some bread from heaven. Lord, we pray, God, you'd help us. Lord, again, move me out of the way. I pray the Spirit of God would take over. I pray, dear Jesus, Father, you'd help us to rightly divide the word of truth. Help us to say nothing contrary to thy will. God, that with all that we will say, God, will be to thy glory. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In verse number 37, uh, as in, Paul, in, in the writings here, uh, it is listed the number of souls that were on the ship that they were sailing with. And they'd done everything that they could. And the promise, Paul promised them he, back in the previous verses, he said to them, he said, not, the ship's going to be lost, but not a soul is going to be lost. And on that ship was, and we were in all in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lighted the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And I got a little thought right here as we were studying again this scripture for this morning. I got a little thought right here God gave me. You know, sometimes in the storm, and this is what we all should do all the time, Sometimes when we're facing the storm, the best thing we can do is just cut loose all the ties, cut loose all, the, all those things that are holding us down, and commit ourselves unto the Lord. And uh, they were in that storm. There was nothing they could do about that storm. But when they, when they uh, uh, cut those anchors loose, and when they let those anchors go, then they were committed uh, to the sea. And they just give up everything. And in reality, you know, when they done that, they were put, placing themselves in the hand of God. And you know what, friend? We face battles and we face storms, but a lot of times all we can do is say, Lord, this is yours. I can't do nothing with it. And if we will learn that early in the storm, and God, it's in your hands, then God will help us and we'll, we'll, we'll have less trouble in the storm if we just realize God knows what he's doing. And Paul realized the Lord knew what he was doing in this, uh, in this storm. And, and Paul had the blessed assurance of God that everything was going to be all right. And he was at peace while he was in that storm. And I'm telling you something, friend. You can be at peace while you're in your storm. I've learned a lot in these last uh, years of my life. I've learned that the storms are not, are not going to cease to come. I've learned that as, as long as we're here on this earth, we're going to face heartaches. We're going to face battles. We're going to face troubled seas in our life. 
But I've also learned this, that no matter what we face, God's always right there with us. And God's always there to see us through. Why do we face storms? We face storms uh, because of our faith and, to, and so that we can prove our faith and God can prove our faith in us. Uh, we face those storms. We face them uh, because it will strengthen us, because it will help us. Uh, that, old, that old tree, those old trees that stand, in, stand there for a hundred years, have they stood there for a hundred years? They face the storm. And when the storm comes, those roots of those trees just grab a little deeper hold and hang on. And, and the older you get, the older I get in Christian life, I know the storms are going to come. But I also know that if I'll just hold on, God's going to see me through my storm. Amen. And friend, I'd leave right now and say I thank God for, for helping us here today. Amen. But we're not. But God will help us in the storm. If we'll just surrender ourselves to Him, God will help us in our storm. If we, we, what can we do about it? What, you, I, somebody's facing something this morning that you don't know how to deal with. Well, let me say something. You can't deal with it. You don't know what to do with it. There's nothing you can do with it. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to worry and fret about what am I going to do about this? That's the human nature. Is that's exactly what you do. But God's way is to commit it to Him and let Him take care of it because there's nothing I can't, you know, nothing that He can't do, nothing that I can do. But God can do everything. He said, "I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me." Paul said that, and I believe, friend, if we'll take that into our hearts, knowing that. That we can't do anything, but God can do it through us if we'll just let Him do it. Now, let's go on here. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. Now, there had already been over two weeks in this storm on the sea, and now they, uh, the ship lands, but it, it, uh, you know, the front part of it runs in, runs aground, and the back part of it is being thrashed around by the waves, so it breaks up. No, the storm didn't get better. The storm got worse. And that may be the way it happens in our life when we think we're about the end of the rope. Amen. Hold on to the end of the rope and tie knot in it and hold on because things may get a little worse. But if God's promised to see you through, God will see you through. And so the ship was broken up. <coughs> and Paul already had the promise that no life would be lost. So the ship was broken up. In verse number uh, 42, And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. Why would they do that? Because if the prisoners escaped, those soldiers that were in command of them, their life was at stake. Uh, they stood the risk of being executed themselves for, not, for, not allow, for allowing those prisoners to escape. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that uh, they which should swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Amen. Now I, I think probably my favorite verse in all this scripture is this last verse. Because the Bible gives the end to the storm. The scripture gives us what the end of that storm was. They all landed safe and escaped all safe to land. Let me say to you, friend, one of these days we're all going to escape to land. Amen. The land of heaven. The place of glory. The place of all our eternity with Him. We're going to escape to that place. And I, these four anchors this morning, let me time out just a minute. Frank, you can edit that out. Time in. We know here at the reading of the scripture that we've already read to you that there was a ship that was broken, a ship that was wrecked, a storm that was very, you know, very dominant, a storm that was very severe, but we see that there were four anchors in this storm. And they cast those four anchors into the, into the sea to hold things safe and fast. Now, we have anchors in our life. We don't ever cut these anchors loose. They cut those anchors loose, but we have anchors in our life that will never, never be moved. Amen? And you've got to hold on to these anchors. You've got to hold on to those things. 
Listen, the last days that we're living in, the storm's going to get worse. Persecution may become great against Christianity. It already is, but it may get greater and it may get harder. Even in our own communities, even in our own churches, persecution may get worse. But I'll tell you something, friend. God has never changed. God's power is never going to diminish. Number one, we see the anchor of God's presence. And I don't know, friend, this morning what we can think of that can be uh, any greater help to us than to know that we have the anchor of the presence of God. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'll be with you even unto the end of the earth. In the Word of God, we're taught that the presence of God is with us always. Wherever we go, God's there. Wherever, wherever we, we live in this life, God's going to be there. His presence is near, and His presence is with us. And I've got an anchor of the presence of God. Amen. I've been in some places where I thought God didn't exist almost. I couldn't feel his touch. I know a great preacher that said one time that he hadn't heard from God in seven years. But guess what he did in those seven years? He stayed with the Lord. And even though he might not have heard from God, he knew God was there anyway. Amen. God's with you. You can't escape the presence of God. A lost person will never escape this side of this side of eternity, he'll never escape the presence of God. But when that lost person dies and goes to hell without God, he'll be without the presence of God through all eternity. Friend, there's coming a day when, when God's going to say enough to mankind and he's going to remove his spirit from this earth. But for the child of God, the presence of God is our anchor. And if you're facing a storm and you don't know which way to look, just look to God, he's right there. You may not be able to look to me. You may not be able to look to your family. But look to God because God's there. He's our anchor. He's our presence in the time of storm, in the time of struggle. Now you put yourself in Paul's position. He was a prisoner. Uh, he was headed to see Caesar. Uh, there was nothing that seemed like a good could come out of anything in Paul's life at that time. And not only that, but he was on a ship as a prisoner and he was in a storm on the ship as a prisoner. He had problems, didn't he? He had troubles. But guess what? He had the presence of God. The pre God was his anchor. And he didn't turn and tell him how to steer the ship or anything. He just looked to the Lord in heaven and he prayed to God in heaven. And the presence of God filled Paul and he knew that God was in control. Amen. We can have the same confidence that Paul had in the storm. He is our anchor. There's this little fellow, seven years old, and uh, his mama every day would take him out, and, and uh, there was a neighbor next door that would come and walk him to school every day, walk him back home. And the little boy, as brave as he was, and you know, he said, I don't need anybody to walk me to school. I'm big enough to walk myself to school. Well, that went on for some time, and the mama said, No, you're not old enough. You're, you, you can't go by yourself. And the little boy got angry and said, Mama, I'm big enough to take myself to school. And after much persuasion, the little boy persuaded his mama to let him try it alone. It was five blocks to school. So the little boy, he got out, and he walked to school, and he walked back. And he said, See, Mama, I can do that. So the next day, he got out, he walked to school, he walked back. See, Mama, I can take care of myself. And the longer he done that, the more confidence he had in himself. And he come one day, and the little boy grew up, and about a year later, two years later, the little boy said, Mama, you remember the day I took my first walk to school by myself? See, nothing happened to me. Mama turned around and looked at him and said, Son, there's something you don't know. When you thought you could go by yourself, I let you go. But as soon as you got down the block, I got out and I followed you all the way to school. And when you got out, hallelujah to God. When you got out of school, I was there and you didn't see me, but I followed you all the way back home, make sure nothing happened to you. Why did Mama do that? Because Mama loved that little boy. 
And listen, friends, sometimes we may think we can walk it alone. Sometimes we may think we can handle everything on our own. But we're not big enough, amen. We're not big enough to handle the storm. We need confidence in God. And we know, friend, I know that no matter how much I feel forsaken sometimes, I know God's right there, amen. And when I think I may be walking alone, I remember God is still there with me, hallelujah. In the presence of the storm, my God is there. He'll always be there when I think I'm walking alone. So don't ever think, friend, you're struggling by yourself. Not only is God with you, but remember, there's ones around you that are suffering and struggling as you are, and maybe in the same kind of storm, maybe in a different storm. But remember, God in heaven will always be there. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Then we have the anchor of God's promises. The anchor of God's promises. The promise that God gave to Paul that was all life would be saved. Every one of them, not one, should die in that storm. And Paul had that promise. God's promises, friend, are steadfast and true. And when you read the end of the story here, we find out that they all made it safely to land. Amen. They all made it safely because of the promise of God. Now God's promised that He would never leave us nor forsake us and we have the anchor of the promise of God. Now, I've been in some difficulties in life that I thought, man, God's left me. But then I read where God will never leave me nor forsake me and I know that even though I might not be able at the moment to feel His presence, I've got the promise of God that He is there and I've got the promise of God that He's going to see me through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't even read where there's any, you know, any injury on the way, but God saw them through. We have the promise, the anchor of the promises of God. In the Word of God, Dr. Everett Storm said that there's over 8,810 promises. And he said, if you don't believe me, he said, you count them. I did. Now, I don't know who this doctor is, but I, in my reading of him, in my uh, studies, he had spent with win his life and he set out to number the promises of God 8,810 now friend I'll tell you something not all those promises apply to me but the promises that do I know God is able I'm anchored in the promises of God and God promised me some things in his word that I know is going to happen number one he promised me that if I call on his name he'd save me by his grace hallelujah amen and one day as a little boy, eight years old, I called out to God and guess what? God honored His promise and saved me by His grace. Hallelujah. You can go back to the day when you got saved and God honored His promise out of the Word of God that He'd save whosoever would come to Him. Amen. We had the, prom we had the promise of salvation. We have the promise of being secure in Him. I'm wrapped up in Jesus. He's wrapped up in me. And friend, I'm secure in the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Nothing can get me out of the hand of God. Amen. I'm secure in Him. I have the promise of security. I have the promise of the Spirit of God. Amen. To lead me and guide me. And that if I yield to the Spirit of God in the time of storm, in the time of trouble, the God of heaven will steer me in the right direction. He will lead me in the right direction. And the Spirit of God will comfort my soul. Amen. I thank God for the promise for the anchor of the promises of God, for all the things that God promised me He will do. Friend, if you're saved today, you've got the promise of God to help you, to lead you, to guide you, to direct you. And in the time of storm, He'll anchor you. He's promised that He would do so. He has promised in Psalms, 30, uh, Psalms chapter 30, verse number 5, that He's promised that we'll have brighter days. And we're doing our, our Christmas drive through and it is dark days. It is cloudy. It's been raining. Uh, the wind's been blowing. But there's a promise of a brighter day. Amen. Sun is shine again. But listen, if you're going through a storm, it's dark days. If you're, ba if you're battling the devil, if you're... If there's something's going on in your life, mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever, and you're battling the storm, listen, it's not bright days, it's dark days in your life. Sometimes you have to look up to see the bottom, almost. Sometimes you look as hard as you can and you can't see the end of that tunnel. 
But I'll tell you something today. I've been there and done that, and I know that the promise of God is true, that there is brighter days ahead of you. Not all days are going to be dark. We don't understand what God's doing to us. We don't understand what God's doing with us when we face our dark days. We don't know why God lets us go through storms, sister. We don't know why he, that, that He allows us to go through struggles and heartaches and sorrow. Why does God do that? He does that to mold us and make us better like the, like the clay on the potter's wheel. And He's molding us and making us and He's drawing us closer to Him in the storm. When we're facing the storm, dear child, that's when we want to get closer to God. When everything's going all right and and everything's going good and there's not a worry in the world, seems like we tend to drift away from praying and, and drift away from, from reading the Word of God and drift away from Him when everything's going well. But when things aren't going as good, hey, we need to learn a lesson from that. We praise God when it's good. We praise God when it's bad, amen, because God deserves our praise. We have His promise that no matter how dark your days may be, the promise of God's presence is there. And He's promised that there'll be a brighter day. There is light at the end of that tunnel. You just, you just stay with God, and one day God will reveal to you what He's doing and what He's done in your life when we get to heaven. There's a little boy that he, his mama, he was always getting under his mama's feet. I don't know why I always use little boys. I guess they're probably because of what they are. Amen? That same little boy that, we'll just use that same little boy that wanted to go to school, all right? Well, this same little boy got, uh, got on his uh, mama's nerves sometimes because while she was at the house working, he was always under her feet. And mama, one day, as she was sitting there, she was making a quilt. And you ladies know about quilt making. I've never been involved in that, but mama used to make them, and I know other people that did. And they'd sew those quilt tops together. They'd make those quilt tops on those, you know, whatever those things you call them. And they'd sew them together with a little boy. He, all he could do because he wasn't tall enough to see what was going on, all he could see was the bottom of that. And I've looked underneath the bottom of a quilt top, and as you look under the bottom of that thing before it's all put together, it ain't pretty at all. It's got the color, but there's strings hanging everywhere, and there's excess cloth hanging everywhere, and it just don't look pretty under there. And that little old boy said, said, Mama, what are you doing? She said, I'm making a quilt for your bed. He says, but mama, this quilt's ugly. I mean, it's, you know, he says, the colors are pretty, but there's cloth hanging everywhere. There's thread hanging everywhere. I'm afraid I'll get tangled up in it, mama. This, this is ugly. So this went on day and day at a time, and, and the little boy just all went, man, this is ugly. This just don't look good. Friends, sometimes in our Christian life, it might not look real good to us what God's doing in our life. But as the little boy, here's what happened to him. One day his mama got finished with that and she picked him up and said, Son, come here. And she picked him up and she let, let him look on the other side of that blanket. And he looked down there at that blanket and he said, Mama, that is a beautiful quilt you've made for my bed. I couldn't see it while I was down below, but I look on it now and, Mama, that's a beautiful quilt. I see what you were doing. One of these days, my friend, even though it might seem that it's not real pretty in life, even though it may seem that things are broken and things aren't going good, one hallelujah to God. One of these days, God in heaven's going to get us to the other side. He's going to let us look off, and He's going to let us see what He was doing, and it's a beautiful picture of what God's doing in your life. Amen. So we have the promise of the brighter days of God. We in Psalms 34, 19, we have the the promise of deliverance that God will deliver us in the very troubles that, we're, that we may be facing. We have the promise in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 of His divine grace. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Every day of your life, God's grace is sufficient. We have that promise in the Word of His divine grace. How did you get through last week by the grace of God? Some of you have lost loved ones here as of late. How have you gotten through that? It's been the grace of God. Amen. Some of you have been very sick. How did you get through that? By the grace of God. Some of you have faced life-threatening diseases. How are you you getting through that? By the grace of God. We have the promise. The anchor of promise that His grace will be sufficient. And then in Revelation chapter number 21 verse 4, we have the promise of ultimate glory. One day, my friend, all this shall pass. One day we'll complete our journey here on earth. 
And either by the way of the grave or by the way of the rapture, we're going to leave this world and we're going to enjoy, we're going to enjoy the ultimate glory of heaven for all eternity. Man, that makes it worth it, doesn't it? Doesn't just to know that one of these days we're going to be with God forever. We're going to be in His presence without the presence of sin, without the presence of worry, <coughs> without the presence of heartache, without the presence of pain. We're going to be in His presence for all eternity. And friend, that's going to be an ultimate glorious day when we leave the troubles of this world behind and we spend eternity with the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, what a day that'll be. I get a little excited when I think about that. Amen. I get a little excited when I think about the promise of the ultimate glory of God that one day I'll be in heaven forever. Amen. Rule and reign with Him on the earth for a thousand years and then for all eternity we'll be with God. No more, no more suffering, no more pain, no more heartache, no more cloudy days, no more bad weather. Amen. Perfect environment for us who are being made perfect in Christ Jesus, we've been made perfect. We'll put on His righteousness, amen. We'll put, on, we'll put on His likeness of His image, amen, through eternity while the ages roll. We'll be able to worship and praise the Lamb of God. We have the promise of ultimate glory. And then number three, we have the anchor of the providence of God. God knows all. You ever ask God why? Have you ever been tempted to ask God why is this happening in my life? It's always human nature to want to know why. My little boys and my little girls, when they were growing up, why was their favorite word. I had a cousin that was worse than my youngins, if I ever thought anybody could be worse than my youngins, that said, why? And Brother Max, he and I, he's a little bit younger than me, but he used to annoy me by asking why. And I wasn't old enough to know no better myself than to ask why. But he would ask why. And you give him an answer, he said, well, why, why? How are you going to answer that? Sometimes we want to question God and say, Lord, why are you letting this happen to me? But we need not question God. But God says he do, does all things that he might manifest a purpose in our lives that He might, might make us molded and make us like unto Him. God knows why. And so no matter what goes on in your life, we have the promise of the providence of God knowing that He knows all. Don't ever think that God don't know what, what problems you're facing. Don't ever think that God don't know where you're going through. Don't ever think that God's left you and He don't know what's happening in your life. God knows, my friend. We have the promise of the providence of God he knows what storm you're facing. He knows what battle you're fighting. And He knows what armor you need on. And He knows what weapons you need. And He knows the comfort that your heart needs in the darkest hour when you lay on your bed at night and when you cry out to God. And God hears your tears. And God sees your pain. And God knows your suffering. And God knows it all. And friend, we can rely on that promise of the providence of God that He knows all. And when you're laying there in bed at night and you're not sleeping because you're troubled in your soul, look to God because God knows what you're going through. Amen. Amen. I'm about to have me a running spell. Hallelujah to God. I'm glad that I know that God knows the storm that I'm facing. Paul struggled on that ship and he knew what was happening. He knew God knows. He knew that God knew what was happening. And even though in that storm, he knew God was with him. And I'll tell you what, my friend, God knows when nobody else does, God knows. I faced, I, listen, I faced things in my life before. I'm going down this side this time. Amen. I, I faced things in my life before that I couldn't tell nobody about. I mean, and if I tried to, they could not understand the sorrow of my heart, the brokenness of my heart, and my wondering, God, what's going on? But guess what? When I got a hold of God and I told Him, He said, Bless the assurance, I know what's going on in your life. And though you may not be able to talk to mom or dad, or though you may not be able to talk to your wife or to your, you know, to your, to your husband, you can go to God, and God knows. He knows all about you. See, God made you. God put you together. God put you in the life you're in. When you accepted Him, you accepted Him fully, knowing that God knows what's going to happen.